Hello everyone and welcome to Nova Church Online. We pray that today's service will be a blessing to you. Please help us share the love of God out into the world by liking and sharing this video by whatever means you have possible. And please subscribe to our channel. By liking and sharing this video, you could be making a real difference to somebody's life that will last for an eternity. We are so happy that you are watching our online services and we as a church are praying for you. We are praying that you will be challenged and uplifted and edified by the Bible's teaching. But friends, this is no replacement for church. So if you are able, please come and see us. You'll be made to feel very welcome. If you are watching from further afield, Praise God. It's great to have you with us. And I hope this service will be a blessing to you. But please also go and be an encouragement to your local church too. And if you have any questions about what is being discussed in today's service, do not hesitate to contact us. With that said, please enjoy. God bless. Can't talk with this on, so excuse me. Can't breathe with it on. <laughs> right, I do welcome you all in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ this morning. Um, my reading this morning is very short, and I'm just going to read a few chapters from uh, the book of Job. Uh, verses, sorry, chapters. <laughs> We've been here a long time. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to read chapter 1 and then I'm going to read from verse 8. It says, There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Or in other words, shunned evil. I'm going to read verse 8 now. Uh, on. It says, And the Lord said to Satan, as thou considered my servant Job, there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that fears God and shuns evil. Then Satan answered, Lord, and said, Does Job fear God for now? Has not thou made a hedge around him? and about his house, and about all that he has on every side. And thou hast blessed him, blessed the work of his hands, and his substance, substance is increased in the land. Put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he has, and he will curse thee to thy face. Job, an upright man, a man who in God's eyes was perfect. He never sinned. He hated evil. And he was well respected. A rich man had everything. But God allowed the devil to take everything away from him. And sometimes we ask, why do things happen? Good thi uh, bad things happen to good people. It's a regular thing, isn't it? But God said that he, Job, was a perfect man. And in this room today, there's no perfect men or women for that matter why do I say this the Bible says that we are saved by grace through faith that our sin is atoned for and because this is taught so lightly that many of us think because we are under grace that we can live and do what we want
I'm here to tell you that sin is real. And sin has effect in our lives. Job was sinless. He lost everything. God allowed it to be taken away. But we as humans, we as people, we give the devil right in our lives through sin. We empower him. Many of us will sin a little and we'll push it under the carpet. We won't bother repenting of that. I don't need to. I'm under grace. And we keep putting a little bit of, of sin under that carpet. And before long it becomes a hump. And we fall over it. And then bad things start to happen in our lives. I'm not here to beat you up about your sin. I'm here to encourage you. But what I want you to do is if there is sin in your life, keep it at a short list and deal with it. Repent. Nail it to the cross this morning. Don't hold on to it. Keep a short list of sin. Because if you keep pushing it under the carpet, it will catch you out. And you will fall. And when that fall comes, it's not nice. And then we start questioning God. Lord, I'm a good person. I'm a Christian. Why is this happening to me? The Bible says that do, do not give the devil a foothold in your life. Close every door. Close every door. Leave nothing open for him to get in. Because once he gets in, that's all he wants to do is, is, is to destroy your life. And, and he might come in subtly, nice. But over time, he gets in a little bit further and a little bit further. And then the first thing we do is, is we fall. Then we leave church. Then we leave fellowship. Keep a short account of your sin. Deal with it. Repent. Do not hold on to it. Nail it to the cross. The Bible says that we should take up our cross daily and follow him. Not once a week. Not once a month. Daily. So please this morning, if you have sin in your life, deal with it don't hold on to it because the only person is going to hurt is you your sin doesn't affect me but I'll guarantee that your sin will catch up with you and affect you so deal with it please this morning let us pray Lord Heavenly Father I just thank you for each and every person here this morning. But my prayer is this morning, Lord, that you would open our eyes to see. That you would open our ears to hear. That you would open our heart this morning. That if there be anything found that is not of you, my God, I pray in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, that you would bring it to light that we can deal that we can deal with it that we can put it right here today that we do not have to carry it around with us and we do not have to beat ourselves up with it so Lord this morning I ask that you would restore the ground that the enemy has stolen Enlighten us, my God, this morning. And this morning I ask you, my God, that you be with us here in power, in truth. And as the word goes out this morning, goes forth, my God, I pray that it would go out sharper than a double-edged sword. 
I pray that it would touch our hearts today, my God. For Lord, we are in troublesome times. And we, as Christians, we do want nothing to hinder us. We do not want nothing to get in our way with our walk with you. We want to stand upon that rock that, is, that does not move. And we can say that by your grace we are saved. That we can say that we have faith in the living God this morning. So Lord, this morning, lead and guide us into all truth that the truth of your word may be spoken. And I pray, Lord, that you would empower us by the power of your Holy Spirit to overcome, to overcome the enemy and walk the path that you have set before us. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. It's lovely to see you all. I just get myself sorted, sorry. Happy New Year. Right. This has been our darkest week as a church in regards to this pandemic. We've probably got two thirds of our congregation out today. Uh, previously, it's because they've been with people who have tested positive, so have had to isolate. This week, people have got it. And uh, it's hard. So we need to pray for them. So shall we do that now? Loving and Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your protection and for your love and for your grace and for your mercy found only in the person Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you that you are a God who heals and we pray for that healing among the saints today. Many in our church have been stricken with this disease and we pray that we will not lose one, that they will all come to full recovery and will be stronger in their faith as a result of this ordeal. Lord, let them know that they are greatly loved by the church here at Nodfer. And Lord, in their isolation, let them know that they're not alone, that they have Father, Son and Holy Ghost with them at all times. Lord, forgive us for putting our hope into a new year, when actually 2021 has uh, started darker than the last year ended. Lord, um, we should put our hope in nothing and no one else but our Jesus Christ. And I thank you for every soul that you've brought here this morning who are willing to make a stand for the truth of who he is and to gather to, to worship him. And I pray, Lord, that all those here in this chapel and watching online will have a fresh vision of Jesus today. That he will come in tangible power and revive his church. Lord, give us courage to keep looking at him, to be unified as a church family in his love, even in the darkest days. We pray the final days of this horrible pandemic. Keep us safe, we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, we are allowed to stay open in tier four. Um, because statistically we are an incredibly low risk um, activity. Um, the church is also very important for people's health and well-being. We want to keep it this way. 
So please make every effort to follow the Welsh Assembly guidelines. Wash your hands, wear your masks. If you're exempt, we understand, but wear your masks and don't leave your seats until a steward comes to get you. If you need the toilet, what are you to do? Hold it, yes. Um, it is tier four that's been extended. Um, which is very serious. We are not out the woods yet. Um, as a result, we are reducing the service time again uh, to back the time of when we first opened. Um, so it's short and sweet, I hope sweet. And um, we are only uh, running services that are of priority, which is a Sunday morning, and uh, Wednesday prayer meeting. A church that prays together stays together. Prayers are the engine room of this house. So if you can make Wednesdays safely, please come. If not, they are all online. Food share remains open during the week and the other auxiliary ministries that people are dependent on in our community. Um, food share is open from 10 a.m. till noon, Friday, Saturday, Monday, and Tuesday. And I'd like everyone to make a special effort this week to pray for all those involved in that ministry because that is frontline work. And this virus has become very contagious. So please pray for their protection and uh, in this crisis you will empower them to be able to share the gospel which is what people really need more than the tins of beans that they're getting um, speaking about food share the plan is to move that work into the garage we're going to redo the garage so it's nice we're not dumping them in the garage. Um, but work began before Christmas. It then halted during Christmas. Christmas is now over, so we want to get it done. So if you are involved in that work or would like to help in any way, please can you see Kevin up by the garage? Up by the garage after this service, keeping socially distant. We can only do what we do as a church by God's grace and because of your generosity. Now, I'm pleased to say that most people are now giving online um, because of the lockdown. So thank you for those that are doing that. But if, like me, you're old school and you like to budget with cash, the buckets are there and there for you to donate. And we have a new year, so a new envelope for those that want to give with gift aid. And if you haven't got yours yet, please see Sue after the service, again, safely and socially distant. It struck me this morning that we are the only gospel light in this valley today. I don't know of another church open between Pontypool and Blenavon. You'd argue there's more churches open right now in Syria, Iraq, Iran per head of population than there are in Wales today and that breaks my heart but thank you all for your commitment and um, for those watching at home too for their prayers your generosity allows us to keep these lights on so please give as the Lord leads I think we should stand together and say the Lord's Prayer in low voice as guideline permits our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen amen please
please be seated. No matter what happens in the world, no one can take that prayer from us, can they? Hallelujah. Uh, Savannah is going to come and give the reading for us today. Today I'm going to be reading from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 24. The scripture reads, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put the, on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the wills of the the wills of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principles, against power and against rulers of darkness in this age. Sorry. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armour of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, have girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having assured your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and I can't read that word, supplication <laughs> in the spirit, being watchful to this end. With all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Um, we're going to rise and not sing but listen to nod for band and i believe the words are behind us this week so you can follow on with what's being sung please stand on your face can it the hardest thing was not to sing along uh, do the kids want to go to Sunday school now please off you go loving and heavenly father lord we thank you that your word is timeless it's true it's sharper than any two edged sword we thank you lord that every challenge to it has been overcome over thousands of years empires have fallen yet your word still stands 
And I pray, Lord, that you'll prepare our hearts and minds to hear it today so that we can leave rejoicing in the hope of the Word made flesh. Rid us of distraction and help us focus on your good news in a world of chaos. A good news that is so important that it has eternal consequences. Lord, I'm heartbroken this morning for our brothers and sisters that can't be here. And I, uh, I pray that they feel our pain and share in it. And um, we can all look forward to better days ahead where we can meet as one again. Until then, may Jesus be lifted. Amen. So good morning again. Life has got really hard, hasn't it? It's got really hard. COVID-19 has hit this church. We've been truly blessed up until now. But it's here. Every day this week I have had a message from someone struggling because of their mental health, going through some kind of crisis because of this lockdown, or because they themselves or someone that they love has tested positive for the disease. Many of us are now having to self-isolate. Many of us, those watching at home, I'm hoping nobody here, are carrying the virus. And what really hurts the most as Christians is that when when we need church the most we can't meet together as we usually would it's hard isn't it we can't sing God's praise and enjoy each other's company as we once did as a church these lockdowns they have divided us and they have isolated us and as a result we're more fearful we're more anxious we're more lonely than ever before And this is the very opposite of what God wants for us. It's the exact opposite of the gospel, isn't it? A gospel that reconciles people into community to share in the love of God. There is a real darkness surrounding this whole thing. In our reading today, Ephesians 6, verse 12, Paul tells us about this darkness. He says that as Christians, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. In these verses here, Paul reminds us that as Christians, we are in a battle. We are in a very real and very deadly battle. A war. A war that is not simply against flesh and blood. A war that is not simply against a virus. A war against dark forces that are evil, 
that seek to split up God's church and destroy it and drag us down with it. And the Bible is full of words that remind us of this truth. In Hebrews 4.12, the word of God is described as a sword. That's military terminology, isn't it? A double-edged sword. We read that the devil, he attacks us with fiery darts. It's not nice, is it? In today's reading, we're told in Ephesians 6.13 to wear what? The armour of God. In 1 Timothy 6.12, we're commanded to fight the good fight of faith. In 2 Timothy 2, we are called soldiers of Christ. Friends, if you are a Christian today, the reality is you are living in a war. Every human being is living in this war. But only Christians are aware of it. Because it's only when you walk in the light that you can see the darkness that's around you. And it is a war, I feel, is more obvious to us today because of this pandemic. It is a war of love, a war of truth, a war of justice, a war of family, a war of friendship, a war of peace and community. It is a war for the redemption of humanity. It is a spiritual war between good and evil. A war that we are told in the Bible began in the Garden of Eden, where the devil, he tempted Adam and Eve to fall into sin, to reject God's laws of love and life, to go your own way. And in that fall, what the devil did was he created enmity between man and God. And since then, throughout redemptive history, the devil has done everything in his power to keep us apart. To keep us away from God's love and life and light that protects us from the darkness. The darkness that we're battling with as a church today. The devil tempts us with idols of silver and gold and lusts of the flesh. He tempts us away from this light to worship other gods gods of our own making and of our, our own choosing. He wants us to follow other religions to lead us astray. He uses demonic practices such as fortune telling and mediums and other self-indulgent spiritual pursuits, all of which empower us to think in our pride and our arrogance that we know what's best for ourselves as we continue to walk into the darkness. He convinces us that we don't need God. He convinces us that the Bible won't help us. That we're okay on our own. And it's simply not true, is it? But this is how the devil works. He tries to empower us so we feel like we don't need God anymore. But all this empowerment does is it actually divides humanity. Because we all think we're better than everyone else. We all think our way is the best way. And through division, he keeps us low. He keeps us in the darkness. And this brings hate 
and shame. It makes us anxious, fearful, and it puts us on a path of damnation. But, thank God for the buts. But friends, no matter how dark things get in this world, no matter how hard the battle becomes for us as a church, as Christians we must stand firm. We must stick together as a church and fight in these last days of this pandemic together. We must keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He is the image of the invisible God. He is the way, the truth and the life. He said himself, no one comes to the Father except through me. We must trust when we read the Gospel accounts that remind us that when Jesus walked on this earth, the forces of darkness screamed out against him. They ran for their lives. They fled into pigs and they ran off of cliffs just to get away from Jesus. Friends, Jesus is the light of the world. And when he is present in our lives, he exposes the darkness that is all around us for what it really is. And if we keep Jesus close, the darkness flees. And at the cross, We remember that Jesus had ultimate victory over it all. And friends, don't let the devil convince you of otherwise in your isolation. Jesus has the victory. Say it with me. Jesus has the victory. Again, Jesus has the victory. Again, Jesus has the victory. Friends, on the cross, Jesus put to death Satan's power. On the cross, Jesus disarmed the devil of every weapon that he has against us today. And friends, it is this truth, the truth of the cross, that we must hold on to as a church to get us through this difficult time. Because only in the truth of the cross can we have victory over the devil's schemes. Victory over this darkness that surrounds us. Friends, the reality of the Christian life is that we are at war. And this pandemic does nothing else but prove it. The devil has used COVID-19 to divide our church, to break up our little family here at Nodfa and lock us in our homes where we can be tempted by him individually. Where he can tempt us into lethargy and inactivity and doubt and fear and cause us to fall into sin. He prowls around like a roaring lion. But he doesn't pick off those that are in the herd. He picks off the individuals who can't be strengthened by brothers and sisters in the faith. He convinces us when we're alone that life would be better without God. That we would be happier if we stopped coming to church altogether, stopped reading our Bible, stopped praying, stopped serving in fellowship with other believers. He convinces us that, that life is more enjoyable if we just follow the lusts of the flesh like everyone else out there. That life would be easier if we, if we do religion our way. Who's in charge of that relationship then? Us, not God. God. 
It's all lies, friends. It's all lies. Lies of the devil. And the cross proves it. Because on the cross, Jesus bled and died so that we can have freedom to enjoy all these things. He didn't die on the cross for you to sit at home all day doing what you want to do. He died on the cross to free you from yourself. So that you can join a community of love. Friends, make no bones about it. We are at war. Not just against a virus, but against darkness. As Paul says in our reading. We're in a war against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And the only way to defeat it, friends, is to come to God through the cross. The cross is where God's love and justice meet. It is a gateway of love for all people to come. And it is where the blood of his son was shed to cleanse us from sin and utterly obliterate the darkness. So if today you are feeling the weight of this war on your shoulders, if you are feeling lonely, fearful, anxious, overwhelmed, if you're confused by this pandemic, if like me you're hurting because you're missing your church family, or if this week whilst locked down in your homes you have been tempted by the devil and have fallen into sin and you're feeling the guilt of that and your bones are aching under the shame and you're seeking forgiveness a fresh start a new life. Well, friends, come to the cross. Come to the cross and let Jesus deal with it all there. Come to the cross and share in Christ's victory today. No matter what you have done and no matter how bad you may feel about it, Jesus welcomes you this morning. His grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. The darkness can't beat the cross. This pandemic can't go back in time 2,000 years and pull Jesus off of it. It is finished. Come to the cross today and win the spiritual war. Amen. They're going to rise and sing. They're going to sing.
above it all Burning bright in this life The cross towers over it all One hope, one deliverer Savior reigning high above it all Above it all we thank you for the reality of the cross that it is stamped in history and cannot be undone let us cling to it this week as we battle through this darkness fighting from Christ's victory may he be praised in all that we do and say protect us Lord Amen